just hooking up to Facebook and YouTube. Get out. I can't see through these damn things. All right, we're live on the Facebook platforms, just waiting on YouTube. We're coming. Hang on, let me try YouTube again. Off. On. What else we got here? Dr. Joe is in the house. YouTube is not in the house. Well, we're just going to give it a second. I'm going to keep on rolling with it. God, I need a haircut. Okay, we're online YouTube as well, all right? Let's just play the uh, intro, allow everybody time to get in here and prepare for the, the uh, <laughs> prepare for Dr. Joe. All right, let's see, here we go. All right, be back in a minute, 19 seconds. <laughs> Dr. Joe Delaney in the house today, gracing us with his presence. Let me just get this thing situ situated. We don't want to hear that. All right, so let's get Dr. Joe up here. I'm a little bit sleepy and tired. Morgan and I had a long session last night. Lots of stuff came through. It was quite exhilarating. <laughs> I'm in a playful mood, so I know that this is a perfect timing because uh, Dr. Joe, he's always so damn serious. So we're going to see if we can't get him to lighten up a little bit. I'm also going to see if I can get some uh, some type of hair styling uh, tips from him since he's got such a beautiful do. <laughs> okay, here we go. I got to lighten it up a little bit. <clears throat> can't be too serious all the time. All right, Dr. Joe, where you at? That thing that says ask to start video, push that button. Can you push that button? <laughs> what are you going on about, Todd? <laughs> I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. Yes. You know? What do you I mean, mean I'm always serious? It's always you that's serious. In fact, huh? most of the time you look miserable, I say. Oh, really? God, now yeah. you're gonna now you're gonna be honest with me and tell me the truth. <laughs> Listen, mate. People say to me, "Smile, it may never happen," but they've got no idea what's going on on the inside of me. Isn't that true? Isn't that because true? I've got a I've got a permanent chuckle going on in me heart. You know, isn't that true? Shouldn't we all be that way? What the hell's going on here? Can you see? I can't see very well through these glasses. Oh, I didn't think so. Yeah, I was wondering. I need to get me a pair of those. No, I'm you're gonna... right about that. But, you know, don't we all need to do that? Don't we all need to lighten the fuck up, right? You know? Excuse my French. but Oh, my we... God. Yeah, don't we need to lighten the fuck up? Seriously. Yeah, we do, mate. I mean, 
I, well, I don't, I don't think it works like that. What I think is the more you see that this is a great big cosmic joke that's being played on us by ourselves, mm -hmm. the more that you can let that go. I don't think that you can develop some sort of cognitive ability to lighten up. I think it's got to come through you and, and basically wash away all the thinking that we've had before. What do you think about that? I think that uh, that makes a lot of sense. I think you, you, you get to your uh, the little uh, inter internal chuckle through your own idiocy. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> I'm, I mean, I, I, I see, you know, hey, look, we've all been possessed and gotten really serious about things. And that's that's part of the whole trip. But at this point, it's pretty fucking stupid. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, this is just going to be a frank show. We get together every couple of weeks. But, you know, if I'm going to go to the park and um, throw the Frisbee with my three kids and they get fined $900, they can go fuck themselves. OK, this is not my universe. I don't live in it. I'm not taking a vaccine. I mean, I'm not about like rebel rebelling. It's not about that. It's about what you're saying. It's the joke. I just refuse to participate. So when I see these very serious uh, do or die posts and memes and expressions and videos being put up, chill the fuck out. You're going to leave. We're going to leave with whatever we came into this thing with and everything in between is the fucking gift. OK, I'm sorry. So whoever you're with, love them, whatever you're doing, love it uh, and so on. And if you're not in resonance with who you're with and what you're doing and so on, then go find it. You know, that's my feelings. Exactly. And it's not to be horrible. It's not to be, you know, it's just that if your energy doesn't resonate with somebody else's yeah. and they don't know, but you do, it's up to you to make the move. Isn't it really? That's the way I see it, you know, because all I'm in control of really is my willpower, you know, my conscious willpower. Should I stay or should I go? Should I turn left or should I turn right? You know, and in the end, you know, how do you know when you've made the right choice based upon your soul's resonance? Well, the way I know is if I do something and it feels good, then that's the right choice. And if I do something and it feels bad, then it isn't, you know, and that's that's how I go now is if my heart's open and flowing, I just keep going. And if it isn't, I take a step back. I don't get into any reactive thing. I take a step back, sink deep into my heart tap like that you know that emotional freedom technique tap mm -hmm. like that and say give us a clue will you what's going on because todd i learned a long time ago that i have got no idea what's going on and if, if i sort of live in this i don't knowness i find out quicker Mhm. Mm yeah i was reading That's something it. i was reading something i love joseph campbell yeah i remiss uh, and i can't remember I, I, you know, you follow those little dots and you can't remember how the hell you got there. I think it was Joseph Campbell with his Bill Moyers when Bill Moyers was interviewing him about the power of myth. There was a great series on PBS years ago. Anyway, I, I don't know what he was citing or if he was actually commentating because it was at the end of his life. And he said, every single thing that anyone does creates a set of positive and negative results. You know, and, and I don't remember how he went in to explain this, but again, I got back to the, uh, the chuckle because I was reading, I thought we're so concerned. I, uh, me too. You know, we're so concerned about doing it right. And, and telling people this and do the, and at, at the end of the day, this, this write up, this narrative, this commentary was exactly right. Everything we do creates a positive and negative. I might do something. Like, you know, like publicly kiss my wife on camera and that creates a very positive feeling for people. But for you, because you're very jealous, it creates a negative one. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm only pointing to the sky. The fact that I'm using that finger, that might have some symbolic meaning. This has got another meaning, depending on which country you're in. So I'll just go back to this one because this is basically a universal symbol of up yours basically right now you would think wouldn't you that two spiritual chaps like us we wouldn't talk like this wouldn't you right? because see todd i've never felt better in my life than i do right now i feel 
totally open, yeah. totally flowing. I feel calm in myself. I feel clear minded. I feel clear minded. And I'm okay with me. Yeah. And generally speaking, if I'm okay with me, then I'll be okay with you. Because I think it works that way around. I think if I'm so. Open, you know, if I'm open, but we don't get taught that, do we? We get taught, be okay with everybody else and you'll get the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What sort of bollocks is that really? Yeah, you know? that's true. And this is that's where true. I'm up to. And you know what, mate? If I'm wrong, right? then I'm going to hell if I'm wrong. But feeling wrong the way I do feels right to me right now. It feels right. And do I intend to hurt anybody or cause trouble? Not in the slightest. Do I intend yeah. to break the law? <coughs> Not in the slightest. <laughs> Not in the slightest. Depends you know. on who law you're talking about. Well, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And my view is if you're living in fear, that's the only negative as far as I'm concerned. But it, it doesn't mean to say that when we don't remain cautious, you know, there's a complete difference between being fearful and being cautious. You know, you can be you can be cautious with eyes wide open. But when you're fearful, your eyes are shut as far as I'm concerned. I agree. Yeah, because, look, if you're in fear to me, like, OK, I was thinking about some of this too the last couple of days. <clears throat> I've been wanting to put a video out. After I saw Laura Eisenhower's incredible video and the com uh, commentary Magenta Pixie did, but I haven't been able to do it because I'm not in a balance. It, is I'm not where I want to be. You know, I'm not close enough to the to the uh, zero point with whatever comes out. So I've been reading some stuff, and um, one of the things that uh, I came to was all the different things that I've put out over the years, thousands of things, and 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 all the times they've been put out from a position of fear and because i was really thinking about it and it really really goes deep it goes really really deep if i'm and i'm not picking on anybody okay nobody at all um let's just say american i don't consider myself an american i don't believe in borders and i don't believe in countries i'm a universal citizen and i'm an earthling but let's say that i'm pro trump or pro QAnon or pro america let's make america great again by the way fuck that let's make the earth great again okay nothing against trump or q but if i am so uh pro whatever the movement is whatever the, the you know whatever it is i'm actually wanting that narrative to be true out of fear that includes the Galactic Federation coming to save our ass. That includes Jesus coming down on a chariot. It concludes everything. It includes twin flame programming. The key is, is, to, is really to be in that no charge place. That's really the presence. And I, I know that sounds really cliche and all this, but I'll give you another example because of what you said about fear. If you're in fear, then you're not in what? We all know the answer to that. So again, going back to Joseph Campbell, I was reading this story. And it was a myth and he was talking about how there were um there was a ceremony and the ceremony was like a king and uh, a queen well they were going to get married and it was you know thousands of years ago so there was a there was a like a, uh like a merlin type who made a special potion for the specific ceremony because the ceremony impacted the entire cultural community right so the merlin character went and made this this potion and this potion was pure love and the idea was that the king and the queen the leaders of the community would drink this potion on their wedding day and wedding night and and they would they would uh you know bond that connection of pure love consciousness and then uh, exude that into the community so there was this errand boy and uh he he was the one that was supposed to deliver it so he decides that he's going to drink it with his girlfriend and they drink it and they make wild passionate love and they find this connection of love that's this infinite love and and they ended up getting caught and so they come to him and they say to him uh, you know I hope it was worth it because we're going to kill you. And he says, I have no problem with it. If, if I have to have, you know, be beheaded and be, before the experience that I had, the, the, the temporal infant, uh, the finite experience that I had with my girlfriend, then so be it. And if you're talking about that, I will be damned into hell for, for infinity. 
then I'll, I'll take that too, because it was worth it. And I was like, wow, that's it. You know, that's really it. And that's what I think we're being driven to. We're being driven to shut the fuck up and be the love that you are. And anything else is an excuse. It's, it's, it, it's a pity pot cry baby bullshit thing, you know? But it's either a victim or a bully, isn't it? It's either pushing or pulling. And I think that the answer is stopping. You can't stop by forcing yourself to stop. This is where I'm up to. And when I say this, you can't. I'm only talking about what I've learned. Right. In order to get to zero point, we have to let go absolutely. Because anything else is a manipulation. It's either the right side of the brain jumping over and stopping the left side of the brain or vice versa. So it's that sort of accentuated antagonism between the masculine and the feminine within the individual's mind. And I think once you get past the stopping naming stuff, right? Yeah. And once you get past symbols, because I think symbols can be a trap, you know, always looking out for a 4-4 four, four and going from a 3-3, three, three, that's another trap, you know. So all this archetypical stuff and all this synchronicity, I think freedom is even beyond that. It's beyond interpretation, beyond evaluation, beyond judgments. I've got no idea what I'm talking about, but it sounds good. So I'll it just sounds keep very going. good. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, my chakras are getting aroused. Are we merging? Right, we are merging, mate. We are merging, but there's no tongues. Okay, but the, the oh god, I, I had like a vomit type feeling there when I said that. <laughs> listen, listen, you won't get the you won't get this sort of conversation with some of the other guests. You know, anyway, that's no, story. you will not. No, you will not. Hopefully, but the thing again, ho let, hopefully, let me just, won't be you know, uh, so. Beyond, beyond words. So I think true freedom is beyond words yeah. because the mind's still interpreted in there. Beyond symbols, because once again, it's still another interpretation. I think freedom is beyond interpretation and it's just a feeling of mm. complete and utter understanding and awareness of cosmic awareness, really. Yeah. And, yeah. and Todd, I know you've had that. I have it. I have it a lot these days. And it's only when my ego mind comes in to peck and say, what's going on? As soon as it wants to know what's going on, I've let it in and it comes in like a little wasp, you know, or a mosquito to try and... And so how do we get shut of that? Well, first of all, I know it's in because I feel disturbed. The next thing I need to do is take a step back and basically open the window and breathe it out again. And yeah. then calm descends and then everything becomes peaceful again. You know, you know, right when you were saying that we hit 111 people on all all the platforms. So there's some truth to that, even though you just threw numbers out the window and made fun of them and everything. But that's OK. Yeah, no, no. You know, uh, people know what I'm saying is this is this is just where I'm up to, because when you said 111, right, I saw 112, you see, so it didn't mean the same thing to me. <laughs> and just this morning, I so, saw the thing about the, the amount of people on the planet at the moment is right. Yeah. Seven billion, seven hundred million, seven, seven. It was all seven, 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 seven. Yeah. And my head said to me, yeah, but there was one hiding. <laughs> you know, and that's how the universe seems to work with me. It keeps throwing a spanner in the works, right? Just to yeah. keep me. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's a that's joke, what... mate. Yes, yes. The gods are laughing and we're the gods, you know? Exactly. And there, it's all I mean, that stuff is, I, I, I mean, am, I am God, right? Yeah. And the other thing is that I am being worked by God. It's it's that subjective, objective, foot in both camps, divine yeah. paradox, isn't it? Yeah, we're we're definitely on to something huge. And and you know, I I just spent I, I can't name names, but I I want I walked to the store a while ago and I listened to <clears throat> somebody uh, who's very well known in the community been on the show many times and um and another very well respected website that's been around a lot longer than Sology and a lot more prominent and uh the the nature of the conversation is and i and i'm in in this too i mean the nature of the conversation is about what's going on and you know and i listened to it for about 45 minutes and i and i was like you know this is going to run out the narrative of the narrative is going to run out 
uh, we're gonna run out of things to talk about, you know, and, 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 and what does that mean? You know, as I was walking, I really respect these people that I'm listening to and, and what I do and, and value and this and that. And I, and I was like, what's all going to just, if we're going to run out of things to say, there's nothing to say that what's there to say, you know, I mean, I'm walking back from the store and there's a lady carrying a baby. That's a, probably about a year old pushing the, the stroller that she had the baby in. And I just took that whole thing in and I, as I'm coming out of this, this, you know, internal conversation and I looked at her face and we just met for a second and the soul hit the soul, right? The soul yeah. hit the soul. And it was just a quick smile, quick glance, looked at the baby, baby looked at me and I thought, shit, that's it, man. But, but how the fuck do you talk about that? You know what I mean? So yes, I think what, what's happened What's happened here, which although there's a lot of uh, people running up the, the, you know, the, the red flag on the flagpole, oh my God, you know, these people are going to be arrested and, and I'm not making fun of any of this stuff. It's part of our journey, but, but what issue is more important than any other issue? What, what, whose pain is more severe than anybody else's? I mean, this, this is about, hey, we stopped the wheels. You're not going to work. We're playing a little game to see how far you'll let us push you in terms of you can't do this and you can't do that. Uh, and ultimately to get to the point to, to, to just quiet down and take, take in uh, who's in front of you, what's in front of you. Um, and I don't care what it is. It can be a pet. It could be a nice dinner. It could be Morgan decides she wants to rearrange the bedroom last night. It could be anything. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Did you I understand totally. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that. <laughs> oh, no. Everything you say, I understand because it's filtered. But I'm really serious. I'm, I'm really. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm actually really. <laughs> serious about what i just said i just had to throw the joke in at the end it wasn't a joke actually <laughs> stop it you, you're in that sort I'm you're, in that, you, you're like the riddler you know the riddler <laughs> you've got the spirit of double hey with you today right i do I, what, I i feel that do you i, I yeah really definitely well we always have a laugh don't we i mean even yeah. though we look like as miserable as sin which is a great expression. I'm, looking, you know. well, I'm wondering when we're going to get young for that part about, you know, we're going to find, you know, that we're going to reverse the genetic pattern of death or aging. I'm well, that, that's Shaz Hargreaves is, is making all sorts of rude comments here. Like I'm yeah. going grayer. And she said that, therefore, I must be wiser than you. Well, we've known that, haven't we, since we met, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm far more ascended than you are. <laughs> yeah. And what, I, <laughs> I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah. Oh, I will not what's argue. What's all that about? You know, because the old Todd and the old Joe would, would have, I would have argued against that. Well, hang on. I've been ascended and enlightened for longer than you. Therefore, you know, what's all that bollocks about anyway? You know, Todd, I feel great today. I'm made up to be having a chat with you, right? <laughs> I I love that T-shirt that you've got in because that's my favorite. Right? Yeah, you got yours on too. You have yours on too. Oh wow, you got yours on too. It's my favorite. It's my most comfortable. Yeah. How, how come yours? How come yours sticks out a little bit on the bottom side of it? That. That's what. That's called chi. That. That's where <laughs> martial artists store their chi because it's basically energy for the future and it's full of wisdom. You see, Todd, you're not quite there yet. In about five years' time, you will have developed that as well. I was hoping. Oh, look, I was that, hoping and, it and would. It, here's the symbol again that goes with it. <laughs> But there's another one on the other side, and that's basically the sacred union. And you know what? I'm bored to death. I'm bored. So, Todd, I'm absolutely bored to death of hearing, oh, this week it's the rise of the sacred feminine. Oh, but next week the sacred max masculine will be back to reset the balance and all that. Oh, for God's sake. Right. In reality, there's no masculine. There's no feminine, yeah. there's no female, there's no male. In fact, Todd, there aren't any polarities in a unified field, in a unified consciousness. How can True. there be? True. There's either one or many. And isn't that the great paradox? It's either a wave or a particle. 
There's none of that either because yeah. everything's connected. And that infinity symbol means there's no beginning, there's no end, there's just waves of up and down this. That's right. That's right. The truth never. Are you still there? Oh, yeah. You froze. Yeah. I thought. Uh, I froze because I was waiting for this stunning reply. <laughs> so, la so last night, um, oh, it was such an exhausting evening. <laughs> Have you taken any pictures? <laughs> no, actually. So last night, um, <clears throat> when we put our hands together last night, and we lay down after a very strenuous evening. <laughs> you're talking about you move the furniture together. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Okay. She claimed, she didn't move any according to what her, the comment she just made, but <clears throat> there was a lot moved. Anyway, so when we put our hands together, this is serious stuff. So okay, we I put know. our hands together and um, we didn't even talk last night. I don't remember. It was really weird because we we did it and it was about an hour went by maybe even longer and then she had to get up and get some water i never went to sleep she never went to sleep so we sat there silent for like well over an hour but it but whenever i went and i connected <clears throat> i was being shown kind of what we're talking about or what i was started talking about at the beginning of the show where like people me included i got throw myself in making these statements you know uh making these expressions and they're they're coming out of fear and then I was shown that, well, this is just the role they're playing. But it was said to me in a way that I'd never really heard, right? And then I looked at Morgan and I in the field, and I said, well, then what are, what are we doing? And they said, well, you're playing a role too. But, they said, but, not because it's me involved, but they just said, but there's a certain element that you two are bringing into this to, to like a transformational energy and then it was went on to explain to me that everybody's doing the same thing you know that everybody's contributing to the transformation and I, that I, you know, you know yeah. that the that the that the the pictures that we see the roles that we see the todd medina the joe delaney that's the fun that's the that's the gift you know that's what you're not gonna get back you might be able to tap into it, you know, 10, 10 uh, uh, lives down the road and say, I'm going to pull from Todd's courage from that, you know, that that he's a saint or he's a he's a, a guide or something. But we're never going to get this moment back. And and when I went to bed last night, I, I felt so, I, you know, I was so tired, but I felt, wow, I'm going to really take this one. And I'm really going to appreciate <clears throat> Todd and I'm going to appreciate Morgan. I'm going to appreciate what we have. I'm going to appreciate what I do every day. I'm going to value my time. And, and I don't know, something, something shifted in me last night. And uh, yeah, it was, I didn't mean to get all serious on you. But. No, no, no. Todd, I can feel when you're talking like this, I feel the same feeling. I've had such deep feelings of gratitude and appreciation for this, basically this time off. It's almost like a resting and recuperation phase that everybody's being forced into, except those on the front line who are being pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed to exhaustion, you know. And there's yeah. reasons for that, because as they become exhausted and maybe become ill, they'll get that time to reflect then upon what's really, really important in their own lives. Because that's how I see this. What's Obviously, I've got a thing coming up your spine now to so say, go on, son, keep going. So it's a time of reflection. And to, for people to stop looking outwards and start looking inwards and saying, what the fuck is important to me? Not yeah. to me and you, but what's important to me as an individual soul? Please, please guide me and show me who I am. What's my purpose here? And how can I be happiest in this life? That to yeah. me is what's called whole health. Call yeah. it, if you like, resonance, call it coherence, call it anything you like. This is all to do with vibrational medicine, as far as I'm concerned, because that's the field that I work in. And so, again, it's all about Tesla. It's all about energy, first and foremost, and then energy, vibration, frequency, and then basically, you know, that great big wave of ups and downs. 
Now, yeah. I just want to say something as well. Something else is this predictive thing is, oh, next month's going to be tough. Oh, the month after that's going to be great. You know, I don't even listen to any of that anymore. You know, yeah. I do listen to it, but I don't I don't pay any attention to it. And I never really have, to be honest with you, because 28 <clears throat> years ago or just over, I was given this gift and it was called Just Live One Day at a Time and yeah. make the best of it as best you can, right? And I was shown by a group of other people who'd had some success in this life, right? By doing it that way, I was shown how to do it. And basically, Todd, it's to realize that I am not everything, right? But I can tap into the everything part of me and saying, look, my ego self saying, I don't really know what to do here. I wonder if you could possibly give us a clue. And for the last 28 years, I've lived my life like by that. Is that God that's outside of me? Is that God that's inside of me? Is it something that's outside that works through me? That's, I don't, Todd, I don't care. I just know now that it's a feeling that when yeah. I'm open and flowing, as I keep saying, I just keep going. And, you know, that's it, mate. It, it is so simple. But this bloody thing up here, it just wants, well, it, it could be simple, but could yeah. you just explain this? And once you once you take the bait of trying to explain it, once again, you're lost, aren't you? Because it goes to one seed thought, and then that just explodes into a whole load of million other seed thoughts. And then your head's up your ass for the next day or two, you know. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Amir Betts here. Just make so Amir knows that we have her shirts on. <laughs> no, that's your stomach, Joe. <laughs> Look, see that's Shanine Mooland. Shanine Shanine Mooland. Mooland. I wish she'd oh, yeah. hurry up and have this child I, so I can I, lose weight. I've got some, I've got sympathetic. <laughs> some somebody said um, <clears throat> that they love your beard. Hmm. So. Um, no, I, I hear what you're saying, you know, uh, about the, uh, what the forecast, um, you know, and I appreciate what everybody brings to the table, but this is what I was talking about earlier. These things are, we are going to run out of things to say, and I think we're going to run out very quickly. I really do. I think that, um, so that that our our conditioning goes so deep i've learned this living with morgan i've learned it through our silence i've learned it through cohabitating with somebody because it's different when you're quiet with yourself but when you start to take that out externally and you start to live with somebody and you have these moments of silence that can be uh, a few hours it can be two three four days but there's nothing wrong and nothing has to be said. And no one has to say, are you okay? And no one has to say something just to say something to see if they're going to get a reaction. So they might feel better that they're there. You know what I mean? I mean, it's really weird, but I really believe that we're going to run out of things to say in regard to who are we, what, what are we, and what are we doing here and what's happening I, I really think that that uh, that's happening, and I'm in a t I'm in the broadcasting business, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I bust my I'm the hardest working man in soul business. <laughs> I mean, Besides me, I've uh, true. That's true. But you know, and and I even get, I'm getting in on myself now, and I'm going, okay. Uh, wh where how do you want to use your time? You know, how do you want to use your time? And and uh, and and I'm really getting to the point now where I'm going, and I'm only saying this as an example of this air of silence, right? This this natural silence, this instinctive way of living. And I'm like I'm I'm starting to examine and use that thing you're talking about to say, what is it that I really want to do? How do I want to spend my day? Because I'm getting to the point now where. Uh, uh, an hour of my time is very, very valuable to me. You know, I know I'm getting serious again. Sorry. No, no, Todd, Todd, time is such a precious commodity. 
but in truth, there's no time. But in a 3D world that our feet are, it's really precious commodity. And I don't want to be wasting time listening to the shit that comes out of a lot of people, you know. And if that's a judgment, then so be it. And I'm not as enlightened as I think I am and all that nonsense, you know, mm -hmm. because I can't be asked just waiting. I used to listen to people go on and on and on and on because the people pleaser in me would think, oh, it would be disrespectful now to just turn around and piss off. But you know what I do now is I just put my hand up and say, I can't, you know, I've got to go and I just go now. I don't yeah. have to make any excuses because my heart's open and flowing mm. and it's my soul that's guiding me. You know, yeah. I got a, a phrase that popped in the other day and I, I, I did actually put this out. You know, Joe, if it goes without saying, why say it? Yeah. You know, and it's a bit like what Morgan says, you know, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, what you need to say for if, you know, if you know it, why do you need to say it or something like that? And basically, I am living, believe it or not, like you, more and more in silence now mm -hmm. and feeling that real sort of depth of communication yeah. with everything, with people, with trees, with flowers, with bees. That's just like a song, this. I feel like this is something from the... The jungle book coming through, we you could, know. We could make this we could make this a little rap going on. We here. could have you ever have you ever rapped before? I've no, I've no idea. I've, I've rapped parcels, but I've never done that <laughs> rap stuff that you do. <laughs> I don't rap. But well, it's you like were, it, you were just on to something. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but it's okay. like you know, and things that come out of me now, you know, light language, for example. I mean, I've talked mm. in light language all of my life and I didn't know it because I just thought it was gobbledygook. But when I was pissed, when I was on the drink and I was out of my mind, I used to be to all these languages would come out, you know, mm. and I'd, I'd come round in the psychiatric department again, you know. <laughs> but I realized today is that was language of light that was coming through, you yeah. know, like like the DTs, you know, when you start to see things in the DTs. I was saying to somebody the other day, I used to get sort of movie reel pictures of hieroglyphics, right, in the yeah. DTs, you know, and I used to hear all these voices. But I can see now that the alcohol disinhibited me and mm. all this stuff was trying to get out. But then it was being filtered through an immature ego, you see. Mm. And, I, and I, I can see all that clearly now. But, you know, when, when I do um, the other day, I was just doing a bum, 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 boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when the rhythm comes in, that Native American spirit jumps in. And it comes in and then another one will come in like a Chinese one and then an Arabic one and all that, you know. And, you know, that was diagnosed in me as something called schizophrenia. Were you, diagn I, were you diagnosed schizophrenic? Did they yeah, actually yeah, yeah. do that? Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Honestly. Yeah, and, and I can see now. I was diagnosed as that because I used to hear voices and some voices would mm. say to me, throw yourself off. Todd, I was saved by a, a little old lady. I was standing on top of a bridge with about a 40 foot drop underneath. Right. And I was just about to launch myself over it. This is where I was really, really ill with all these voices in my head saying, jump, you can fly, jump, you can fly. And this old lady, I say, I've got this thing going up my spine again now. Yeah. So this old lady apparently ran across the, the road, grabbed me by the, my shirt on the back and pulled me down. And I fell down, smacked my head on the ground. The ambulance had to be called. And then for some unknown reason, they took me to hospital and put me back in the psychiatric department, you know. So all those things happened to me. But I can see now it's not schizophrenia. It yeah. was just it was not multiple personality disorder. It was multiple intelligence and potentials trying mm. to get out, you know. And I can see now that if you, I, I live a clean life, I don't drink, I don't take drugs, I don't take medication or anything like that. I just sit with it now. And just have a word with it. And it's almost like Medusa's head with 12 things coming off it. And to me, those 12 disciplines or frequencies, uh, they're the potentials of every single human being on this planet. And they yeah. can be opened up through the use of sound and light, correct nutrition and correct movements. That's where I'm up to now, Todd. Yeah. What about you? Well, um, you know, uh, Jason Estes was on yesterday. Franco was on about three days ago. And they're, and they're, they're a couple of the people that, that, uh, do like a forecast state of the union, yeah. fairly not in the too much distant future type of, uh, forecast. And, uh, so aside from that aspect of it, 
they bring in to me they bring in uh to, as in everything the the power of suggestion or you know because that's really what it is and, but both of them have talked about and other people have too they've talked about having full recollection of our multidimensionality all of all our incarnations or, or even some of them think about that think about the impact of that so it must have been in my head uh so when we lay down last night um, many things happened to me but one of the things that happened to me was i was getting clear memory of other incarnations uh the ones i was getting were with morgan right i think there was three of them they were they were one was on planet and two were off planet but i understood at that point i understood that for some reason it clicked in my head in the last couple of days and i started to get this information and i said oh and i'm having a conversation with the you me we and it and i'm saying how like almost like how much of this can i handle right now and i was like go 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 you know like push the accelerator down but I know that couldn't happen. But at the same time, I could feel it coming in. It was very fluid. It was very smooth. The human will catch up in a, you know, whatever, two or three days. Yeah. But I, I saw it as a, as a true reality. So think about that. Think about what, and this is what you just said about the potentials. I don't think it's the potentials. I think it's our natural nature. And I think what's happening is like, um, think about if we just had just say five lives, five lives that were earth incarnations and you had that full memory of those lives and you had the full memory of a knowing soul okay like so the soul lineage maybe not all the memories of the soul lineage but you knew i'm a soul um you know I, and, and all that goes with that and then get up tomorrow and start your day regardless of whatever circus is going on in the world this is where i think this is going to happen this is what i think is happening I don't think it's going to matter anything that's being said on the external. That's why I go back to it. Um, we're going to run out of things to say. We're probably better off, you know, and this is just my opinion. We're probably better off if Todd likes to uh, turn on the broadcast software, get some videos, get some music, do a little commentary, do a little rap, play friends videos. Todd does that for Todd. Or if Joe likes to do run down the road and do a video, Joe does that for Joe. He's not doing it for anyone else. Todd's not doing it for anyone else. Maybe this is something they want to share, but that, but what I'm getting at is all that stuff out there is going to go away. We'll be better off doing our own expressions, uh, channeling whatever information we get, light language, dance, movement, art. I mean, I think this is, this is, you know, music, uh, sound. I think it's closer to our true method of communication i think we're going to get more out of it and i think these things all these all this noise out here is just going to go away it's not going to be like oh stop doing that it's not cool anymore it's just going to stop because people, people are not going to listen to it. they're going to need it well exactly exactly and that's the thing is do what you feel if you're connected to your soul right it's because you know that you're open and flowing if you do what you feel like from moment to moment, then you're being authentic. And Todd, it may be one moment that you want to do one thing, and then suddenly in the next moment, as your soul guides you, it may yeah. be want to do something else. And that's why, apparently, you can't pin down free people. You can't yeah. pin down enlightened people because they don't work to any sort of format. They don't work to any system. They work from their heart, right? It's not determined, right? It just changes yeah. from one breath to the next, you know? And I love that because people who are free can't be controlled because you can't pin them down, right? The only way you can pin them down is to try and frighten them back into the 3D reality. And yeah. then you can force feed them then with all this fear information. So, you know, it's bollocks, mate. I, that's what I see all the time. You know, it's it's so, I mean, I have, you know, that dragon, <laughs> I can feel it coming in now. It comes, uh, you know, it comes in. Does that, does that ever come, does that ever come when uh, you and your wife are moving furniture in the bedroom? Absolutely. Well, well because, honestly, you know, Todd, I'm just saying it because when Morgan starts that light language which she rarely does it like you know she'll do it in front of me but she'll very rarely she will never do it online 
can tell you that right now. But man, when she starts doing that light language, I like I tell her, I warn her, please don't do that light language unless <laughs> you want to see the furniture start flying around the room. Do you shout out talk dragon to me? Talk dragon to me, you know. <laughs> but but no, I see because that. She, no, she turned into a dragon. I told you about that. Her 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 arm turned into a dragon arm and she clawed me. And the next day she's like, where did you get those scratch marks on you? I'm like, what are you talking about, man? You, you did see, them. I, I had the conversation. Like puts her, she, she puts her <laughs> hand up there to see if they match the scratches. And she's like, they're not my, they're not for my hands. And I'm like, well, they were yesterday when you had a, a dragon claw, you know? You yeah. scratch my, you know that one? You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. You know that one? That's just taking it too far, that really. I know, man. So, I mean, and then, and then here's another thing too, right? You, you take this one. All right. So like, I got this like in the last week and I was talking to this lady, this elder lady, I think it was yesterday or the day before I talked to two of them. So I can't remember which one it was. And she, we were just like connecting, like, you know how that happens, you know, and you just like, and so I was like, we're here to integrate everything. Right. Like love and lust, like, like physical and non-physical, like, to me, like some of the things that we have done in our lives that we maybe didn't do in moderation, uh, we went overboard or they got a bad rap or whatever the case is, or, or, or it was a part of our life that, that, that we want to forget about. So we threw the baby out with the bathwater. When's the last time that you did something real? When's the last time you moved furniture? I mean, really moved the fucking furniture in your bedroom with your wife. You know, when's the last time you went out into the park and ripped your shirt off with your beach ball belly, you know, and I'm in that group <laughs> and, and started running around with the kids in the sun. You know, when's the last time you did something fucking real? Let's get our heads out of, you know, the God's asses. Okay. You know, up there in the ethers and, and come down here and smell the roses. You know what I mean? I mean, when's the last time, when's the last time you did something real? You know? But I, I think Todd, I live my life like that now, as you do, you know, I feel it. I can feel the energy. It comes in, woof, you know, and then it's in and I think, whoop, I'm gone. You know, there's obviously something coming up here and it just flushes through me. Sometimes when I'm running, when I'm running, I get into a ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum and I think I think my ego thinks, oh, it must be a gentle run today. And then I'll go around the corner and suddenly, woof, I'm running like the wind, you know, I'm giving it loads. And I'm <laughs> there's part of me thinking, fucking hell, Joe, you're 65 years of age, you know, you know, you should take it easy at your age. And there's another part of me to say, don't worry about it, son. Just let yourself go completely. And that's what I do, Todd. I just sort of go with this impulsiveness. And trust, you read a lot of Carlos Castaneda books and Don Juan or Don Juan, you know, mm -hmm. and he used to blindfold his students and send them out into the prairie and say, right, get running, you know, so that they would let go absolutely, get over the instinct to defend themselves and be guided by spirit then. And that's what I feel I do now is I just let go. Even when I'm riding my motorbike now, I'm sort of let go and I think, oh, bollocks to it. You know, I'll just open up and see what happens, you know. And it's so exhilarating and it's so exciting. It's like I'm on, on fire all the time and there's like an electricity running through me. And I know what that is now, Todd. It's spirit driving that process that's driving the electricity that's causing me to have an exciting life and that's what i've always wanted it's never against anybody it's never fired at anybody it's just driving me and i i think that you know to go back to the masculine feminine thing there's got to be some friction there to create the energy to direct the excitement to have a bloody life I'm on yeah. one now, you see. So you've, all that miserable, serious stuff you've come out with has made me the same now. <laughs> Hung, Hung Nguyen, just a comment from the audience. We need to include him. She is the, uh, the uh, sometimes uh, moderator on Soul Speaks 5D. She says, I move furniture for a living. Does that make me a professional hoe? I don't know. Would you want to answer that one? Yeah, what sort of uniform has she got? I think it's a French made uniform. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't work for me, strangely enough, but there you go. That's not gonna do that. I'm just a making it I'm making it up as I go. Well here's here's the thing, isn't it? The root has got to be open. 
the sacral chakra has got to be open. We've got to allow this energy to get past our belly buttons, mm -hmm. to clear the solar plexus, you know. And to me, you mentioned before, there's lower half frequencies and there's higher half frequencies. We don't, we don't move from the lower to the higher. We merge them. That's the way I see it. We transcend and include everything that's gone before. And in that way, we're not fragmenting ourselves again. So it's to allow all those parts that have been repressed to come up and to merge, you know, and that's the way I see it then. Yeah. You know, it's like higher frequency and then switches again. There's the infinity symbol because of expression and stuff like yeah. that, you know. I mean, I, I said the other day, all this stuff about sending love outs to the planet and please mm. make sure that the hungry are fed and all that. That's an ego trap to me. And I could be completely wrong here. Mm. But I think that if the ego says send food to the hungry, the hungry might be there to learn the lesson of hunger so that yeah. they can get out of it for themselves. So that's a sort of ego fantasy thing. So well, it I is. Think, yeah, I agree. So, yeah. so I think, again, just to open the heart out and ask the universe Please, by all means, use me as a channel of your love and send this energy transmuted and differentiated in any way you see, feel, feel, see fit to use it and then leave it at that then, you know, that, that you know, and I know other people have commented on this, but it's a bit like when I'm doing healing. You know, and I'm not the healer. The healing energy is working through me. Yes, I know that. I know that mm -hmm. but when I'm doing that healing thing, I don't say, please, if, if somebody comes in with a bad leg. I don't say, please send the energy so that their leg gets better. I just say, use this energy, please, in order yeah. to put them right, you know, and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I agree with what you're saying, by the way, about, um, okay, so I'll give two examples. One, you, you, okay, so when I met Morgan, and we, we, we couldn't come together for like 16 months, and I used to tell her, like, she might call me and say, I'm not good. I'm wobbling. Um, I'm in 3D or, you know, or I don't feel good, you know, and I'd say, I'm sending you healing. <laughs> and she'd say, send it to yourself. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, and all the old stuff didn't work with her. You know, I love you and all that. But, but fast forward and, uh, and, and he, I'm just going to say this too. I think we have the right to get pissed off. I think when somebody is a fucking asshole, we have a right to get pissed off. Now, whether that means they're actually a fucking asshole, I'm not here to prove or not prove, but, but, but I have a right to feel my anger. This is part of what we've learned in terms of figuring out what's, what are feelings and what is emotion and how we, how the human part of this whole thing is really the root of our expansion. So we have, uh, you know, people say things to us every now and then and, and that's okay. And we've, we've, we've learned to handle it pretty well, but we had one that, that, that happened kind of recently. And, um, and so this person is like, you know, like on the comments and saying, Hey, I can heal you basically. Uh, uh, I can do this for you. This is what I do, you know? And I felt like saying, go heal yourself, man, go love yourself. There is not enough love and healing and alignment that I can give myself to have any left over. When, how, when are you supposed to stop loving yourself? When are you supposed to stop taking care of yourself? At what point? And then what? You take what you got left over and give it to other people? No, that's not how it works. You're giving, you're loving the universe. You're aligning the universe. You're expanding and healing the universe. That's you, universe. And when you do that, it, it's an automatic, <clears throat> it's an automatic thing, you know, so I really get what you're saying. And I think that that's a big part of what's happened recently. And I commend anyone and everyone for their intentions, but I would just gravitate. I resonate with what Sandra Walter had to say. Uh, I forget who the other prominent person was in regard to these meditations. If you're going to have a meditation, this is just my opinion. I resonate with these ladies. And that is, if you're going to have a meditation, just have it be unity consciousness. Meet me in the unity, uh, in the unity field, the United field. Meet me in that space. And that's it. Nothing else has to be said. Let's not send all this stuff and all that stuff 
we're just depleting ourselves. And I've learned this living with a, a hell of an energy practitioner. And maybe I have an advantage, but I agree. And I think this is one of the things that's coming to the surface. Just as we're going to run out of things to say, we're going to learn to, to uh, invoke our multidimensionality, our infinite limitless skills, abilities, possibilities, all that stuff. And we're going to, to uh, embody it within ourselves and blossom and illuminate and emanate. And it's just going to, it's, that's the fucking virus. Okay. Well, that's I, it. That's the fucking chuck, virus. Let okay. me chuck something else into the equation mm. then. And this is where my head is. And you know what? If I'm <laughs> learning, I'm learning and whatever, you know, but it's this setting an intention as well. I, that doesn't work for me that because there's part of me thinking, which part of you is making the intention here? So the way I get over that is, I tap on my heart and I go, thy will, not mine, be done, you know. Mm. And then I just leave it up to my higher intelligence, which is the big me. And I say, look, you know what's best for the little me down here. Just give us a bloody clue and try and make it as clear as possible. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. And that's where I seem to be now, you know. Yeah. And it's like other things as well. People send things to me is that I make too much lightheartedness out of suffering. No, I don't. Right. I care greatly about people and trying to help people to reduce suffering. Right. But they think because I'm lighthearted about it that I don't care. I don't care what they think, Todd. Yeah. I've spent my whole life worried about what other people think about me. Do you know where I'm up to now? I couldn't give a shit. That's right. a healthy thing. That's a healthy thing. Um, because look, okay. And look, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. Uh, thank you, beautiful sister, Mary Sankus. And this is an example. I'm not picking on her at all. She's, she's got a point. Do we need the F-bombs? So I read this while you're, while you're, while you're saying that. And I said, man, I'm, you know, I've, I've pretty much made it a point not to use them so much anymore. Yeah. But sometimes I do. Like if I'm in a loose conversation with you, I'm going to do it, right? But here's the thing. Here is what you're talking about. Here is another element that I think we're all going to come to from our, in, from our own internal expansion. And that is, that ain't my problem. All respect to everybody. Uh, I might be shooting myself in the foot and I might have a lesson that I need to learn. <clears throat> you know, but if I'm going to alter my frequency because of external forces we've already played this game we've already blamed everybody on the external but ourselves we've already looked for love in the external from everybody but ourselves yes i think that you know to thine own self be true and if i've got a lesson to learn about f-bombs you know I'm, again i'm just using this as an example thank you very much beloved sister for, for making that comment because there's no coincidences but maybe i have something to learn about it we're using this as an example but if I'm going to alter my frequency, may it be from a place of, of uh, growth uh, and not, not uh, out of uh, some external force that I choose to make that alteration without having addressed the, the uh, you know, whatever it is inside of me uh, that I'm ignoring as a result of of a, you know, going this other direction. So I think this is another thing that's going to come into play uh, because this has been something that, um, you know, if you, you know, people that have been in the medical industry like you and they, they, uh, they ask the people in palliative care, what are your biggest regrets? They always say the same thing. I wish I would have done for me and not for everyone else. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing there that's actually incredible sacred wisdom from a person who had the akashic just like we did coming in and who's had a long life that's that's about to physically transition i agree just just on the the effing thing in the trade i'm known as dr effing joe right and i don't i don't it spontaneously comes out and what happens is the people that i work with and there are many they go he just swore then he must be okay him See what mm. I mean? So, mm. so I never know. And, and, you know, I, I've asked my soul or my God or spirit, I've said, look, if you want me to stop swearing, then nip it in the bud for me, please, please change that part of my behavior. I'm quite willing to 
to let it go if it serves a bigger purpose. No problem at all. Right. But I never used to swear, you know, Todd, until I met Shanine Mooland. Right. <laughs> and this is true. <laughs> and she... <laughs> right. I was like a saint until I met her and she's turned me into a devil. With she her is, energy. She's she's the only soul on the face of the earth that I really worry about. I wonder about her. Yeah. If, I, if, worry, I, I worry about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she's lasted this long with that sense of humor she's, that she's got. We're taking a huge risk tomorrow. She's going to be coming on the show. I know. Tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm to very that. concerned about that. You know, no telling what's going to happen. I'm hoping that at some point somebody will shape shift on the show. We've had some people uh, do some pretty wild things i did i did catch morgan on camera shape-shifting i shared those photos it's quite interesting you know last night too what was interesting last night now that i'm thinking about it so i i laid down and i started to see all these golden particles because whenever morgan and i move furniture there's always golden particles and even whether it's etherically or physically or both right but I, and, and, and I don't usually talk at night. She usually talks if there's any talking. So I said, wow, I see all these golden particles. And then I shut up, but I kept watching it. And then there was this huge, like, a, you know what a foundry is, right? You know, where they have like, okay. So it was like a foundry of all this golden liquid just filling up the room. And I'm thinking, holy shit. Wow. Nothing was coming through. And then the next thing I know, I see these golden pyramids. Okay. And the next thing I know, we're in the pyramid and everything's gold. Like, like there's this in the middle of the room, there was this huge kind of like a, a Eiffel Tower looking thing, all gold inside the pyramid. And then I look on the perimeter, like on the walls of the rooms that we're in. She's there and uh, we're in the center of the room and there's all these, I didn't know what they were. They look like dragons but they were upright like a humanoid. They weren't reptilian. Some of them had like Thoth faces and some of them had like alligator or crocodile faces. And I started looking each one of them in the eye and I thought, what the F is going on here? Like, I'm not scared, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not getting like, you know, any, any direction, you know what I mean? And so, <laughs> she said that was your wiggle not your pit not a pyramid no it wasn't my wiggle mr wiggle. but anyway so anyway to make a long story short so what happened was i was trying to get the information and so then i looked in the in the center of the pyramid and it was me and her like laying in this big golden i guess bed you know and the and the and i kept saying what are you trying to tell me what are you trying to tell me and I, and I specifically heard Morgan say, that's not a pyramid, that's Mr. Wiggle. No, I'm kidding. But so what I heard was, there are no words. You, the message is, you are the center of creation. Now, this is it for everybody. This isn't just about me. You're at the center of creation. And, and the closest thing we can tell you or show you is that when you two are in this golden bed or whatever that thing was and you're making love and you're in that frequency that's it that's it and then and then the only other thing i got was all those figures that are along the wall pretty much told me this is an egyptian scenario this is like a um this is like a transmission from those times that stopped and we're picking it up you know like a like a template that that kind of hit a dead end and now you guys on earth are expanding it it's kind of interesting see everything you've just said there i understand that because we had i'm in a group and we had a group meditation a few weeks back and we were all picking up the same thing and i got the same with you the golden flow this liquid gold right and i get anubis a lot anubis pops in but also that alligator one, but also I get the holes of a menti, it's called the holes of a menti. Yeah. And, you know, I, I get all that sort of stuff. And Toth is always there. If you say it like Toth, you know, because Toth, quicks, yeah. you know, all, all those sort of things. So we're all getting 
a lot of us are getting these collective visions. And what I see really is like an oozing sort of Vesuvius thing. And there's just gold oozing out now and covering yeah. everybody, you know. And, and it, you know, from a symbology, I see, I'm, here we go again with the feelings and stuff. You know, I think that this is coming through. This golden light that's now coming through yeah. representing the rays of the sun and all that's gone before us, all the information, call it the Akashic Records, call it past lives, it's all being really opened up to us like apocalyptic because that means a lifting doesn't it or a separation of the veils i can see that that's what's happening now for everybody on the planet and their yeah. former experiences are piling in through yeah. this sun that's basically a portal to other worlds you know yeah. because we're in a tiny little simple little part of the galaxy here which is part of the galaxy of galaxies of galaxies of galaxies and so that's what I see sometimes is sometimes the, the sun opens up and I get sucked through through it and then I'm on the other side of it exploring like what's behind you your backdrop there sometimes mm -hmm. I'm in that one and sort of just like fl flying through it and stuff you know I don't know what that's yeah. all about, Todd, but more and more people are talking about exactly what you've just mentioned. I think there. so. Yeah, I think so. And I remember last night thinking, because it went on for a long time, and I remember thinking, because that reminded me of it when you said that. And I remember thinking, because I what I'll do, she'll usually close her eyes, and what I'll do is if I start seeing stuff, I'll like prop my head up, you know, and look out to the room, like where my head's more perpendicular with the floor. So I had done that, and then I had the urge, I wanted to sit all the way up, because I'm looking around and there is no, there are no walls, you know, it went from the period inside of the pyramid to there's no walls. And I, and I wanted to sit up, but it'd been already like 45 minutes. I didn't know if she was sleeping. And I, and I wanted to say, where the F are we? <laughs> like, where are we right now? Like this, it was, it was an absolute more physical than most times in fact i think it was the, for me the most I, I literally felt like i was in another dimension or b had bent space and time you know what yeah. i mean yeah. uh but in getting back to what you're saying about the gold and about the occurrences you see uh, this is what i've been getting at in this conversation i i i don't think i think we've done a tremendous amount of work and I'm not saying we don't have work to do, but what I am saying is, is that there is a collective thing happening. There is something greater than us that has occurred. We've, we've got something to do with it. There's some kind of connectivity and that this has reached a point where wait, we're past the hundredth monkey. We're, we're past the tipping point. And because of the internal epiphanies and revelations and such that the external, uh, you know, uh, jabber is going to go away. The, you know, worrying about what people think is going to go away. Uh, uh, many things that, that are very subtle uh, aspects of the 3d are going to go away. It's going to be somewhat seamless and painless. And we're, 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 we're there. It, almost like, you know, we'll walk outside and look at this distortion and go, you know, like not even give it a second thought, like, you know, I'm not go where I can't go to the beach. What, you know, like there's no toilet paper. What? You know, I, I think it's just all going to go away. I could be wrong. I'm just my opinion. No, mate. Same wavelength, same feelings. God, to me, is a feeling. And I think we're just here to experience that ultimate feeling of openness, wideness, mm. limitless expansion, and just hearts wide open, eyes yeah. wide open, hearts wide open, all our senses totally wide open with no limits whatsoever. I think that that's what we've come. And something else that came to me, and it's come to me before, is where Atlantis left off and paused, we're here to take over from there. And I think all the technologies are coming through. But I get this big thing about it's not so much Atlantis now, because that to me is a masculine thing. It's mm. a Lemurian energy that's now guiding the process. And I'm not going to get into feminine versus masculine, but it's almost like nurture is restoring true nature. And that's where I feel up to now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, really, I think we're, yeah, I remember getting, uh, uh, we had a, something happen a few months ago. But I remember asking Morgan about it because it was, it was it was channeled through her and then the next day i was like whoa so what happened now and it was egyptian there was some egyptian stuff in it which doesn't normally happen you know it doesn't it hasn't shown its face a lot but um 
but basically, and I, I can't remember if I had a dream or something happened and I said something to the effect like, um, you know, we're picking up information from them. And then, but that energy came to us and basically said, uh, you're kind of like what you said about Atlantis and Lemuria, but you're, you guys, the earth is, is continuing this stuff, uh, yeah. is, is completing it. It never got done basically. And that we're, and, and that goes, that's always resonated with me that this is a universal correction affecting all timelines, all dimensions. And we're at the center of it. You know, what more can you ask for? You know I call I mean? that quantum disentanglement play on words, but it's almost like knitting together in a proper pattern this time because we were we had all sorts of knots. We've come in and it's love that disentangles them. And I also see that crystalline matrix actually overlaying the Earth's grid. And it's also the energy that's coming from this crystalline matrix is actually flushing out the Earth grid and resetting it back to its normal uh, position or homeostasis and all that. Yeah, so there you I go, know. Todd. Considering I didn't know what I was going to talk about, uh, we've we've done rather well, don't you think? Are you trying to run me out now? Oh, it's one. It's one. We've been. It's one eleven over here. I know, mate. So I, I know that you've got others coming on, especially yeah, that kidding. other one. Hey, hmm? that one? one that's been hiding. You know Which... that Rebecca Williams who's been hiding for ages. I know. I, I'm really excited to see her, and uh, and I'm and I'm and I'm. You know, I think too that it's. Uh, important to um to well for me it's important to to show gratitude uh, publicly i think that's one thing that another thing that will will happen it may not happen with words but i think that we'll start to really uh show appreciation uh more demonstratively because i think that's kind of been shut down you know there's that pair uh, patriarchic or whatever you want to call it but anyway i want to say to joe and to his to his his uh his his wife uh thank you on behalf of solji for your continued love and support and contribution and i'm also gonna um say to rebecca williams uh when she comes on later today uh because she has she's just she's just been a huge part of solji in a very quiet way and i want to thank her for that too publicly so that's my that's my thing thanks mate i'd just like to say before we go that i hope mr wiggle gets better <laughs> Mr. Wiggle's going to take a breather today, but he'll be back to work tomorrow. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. And I can't believe I just answered it, but you know, we have Morgan to blame for that. All right. See you later, Joe. Take care. Oh, bless you, mate. Thanks very All much. Right. Yeah. Take care.